Good morning, lovely people. How are you all today? I hope you're well. You're joining me in a very, very damp garden. More of that shortly. Uh, it's not a garden day for me today, uh, but as usual, <laughs> I'm popping down here first thing with a couple more bags of seedlings. Maybe I should call them plants at this stage. Um, it amused me on my way here because when I come out of my house, I live on the high street, main street, as you would say in America. So I walk a ways down the high street, turn off into a little side road, all the way down there through the park to get to the plot. And just as I was turning off the high street into the side road, two of my plot buddies were coming in the opposite direction. And they were both holding empty seed trays. And I joked, I said, I said, have you two just done what I'm about to do? <laughs> Take seedlings to the garden. Yep, that's exactly what they'd done. Uh, they were just saying that they both work from home still. Uh, and they've got a day of being on Zoom calls and on the computer. So they've just made the most of this quiet time, sort of between eight and nine in the morning, to come to the garden, deliver some seedlings and just, lap up this kind of freshness before spending a day on their computers. So today I have brought with me, oh, just reaching down, uh, two more trays of tomatoes. One is Amish paste and the other is Rose de Bern. They are both big, chunky monkeys, beefsteak type tomatoes. The um, Rose de Bern has a beautiful, as you can imagine from the name Rose, a sort of a pink flesh, quite a deep pink and slightly pearlescent flesh. It's gorgeous. They're quite diddy at the minute still. Now, I'm bringing on extras of these this year because Paul had mentioned months ago in one of his videos that he didn't have any Rose de Bern. Or I think I'd mentioned them when I was sewing them and he messaged to say, have you got some spare? <laughs> so yeah, I'm bringing a few on for him and I'm really glad because um, as far as I know, his pink Bulgarian, which is very similar from what I've seen from his garden last summer, they're very similar and I'm not sure whether it was that none of his germinated or some of them germinated and keeled over. So I'm chuffed, absolutely chuffed, to bring on extras of those for him. I'm partly chuffed because I also feel really guilty. I promised to bring on some butternut squash for him because, you know, I can't remember, I think he had no seed. My butternut squash are looking an absolute disaster. Well, not a complete disaster. I sowed... 10 seeds for me, 4 seeds for Paul, so 14 all together, and 6 didn't germinate at all. They were all for the same batch of seed, they were all in the same compost, so 6 didn't germinate at all. And of the 8 that have germinated, 2 of them just look really wrong, they're just not growing, they're just not doing anything, they're stumpy, wumpy, horrid little things. The others have all got a true leaf by now, etc. So it looks like I may not have any butternuts to give to him, having promised him some. So at least hopefully I can make up for it with the Rose de Bern. And of the other squash that I sowed, I'm going to try and sort out one spare of each different variety and, and at least have maybe four or five different squash to give him. We'll see. So the other tomato I brought down today, and I thought I'd quickly mention it, this is the Amish paste. So I grew this for the first time last year based on Paul. It's all about Paul today, isn't it? Yay, the Paul fan club in Vivi's shed. Um, quite right, we love you, Paul. Um, so I don't know how long he's been growing Amish paste. I grew it for the first time last year purely based on how much he waxed lyrical about it. Again, like I said, it's a big sort of chunky monkey beef steak, so it's perfect for just rough chopping, chucking a roasting pan uh, to make, later on to make into tomato sauce. Obviously, it's not gonna be bean sauce, Vivi. 
yeah, he'd waxed lyrical about them for ages, so I thought, well, I'm going to have to have a go. So, very kindly, last year, Paul gave me some seed. Then, obviously, the ones that I grew last year, I saved the seed from to grow my own again this year. What I didn't know, and I'm just going to mention it for any of you who are maybe trying it for the first time this year, they have a very droopy aspect. So, they are... Uh, a cordon type tomato, so the tomato that's going to go up and up and up, so it will need support, a nice sturdy bean pole to tie it into. I always prefer to have cordon tomatoes because I can get more into a smaller space rather than big bushy types which sprawl everywhere and you have to plant less in your row. So it was growing but the leaves were just so floppy and sort of flimsy. They really didn't have any life to them. And I was thinking, oh, you know, do I need to water them? Water them. Have I overwatered? Oh, I don't know. And then at some point in the summer, Richard and Paul had come over for a visit and Paul said, no, that's how they grow. <laughs> you're fine, they look fine. So yeah, if you're growing them this year, don't be shocked at this kind of sight droopiness of them. Uh, it is quite disconcerting though. I did think I was doing them a major disservice. Right, a couple of things to catch you up on. I thought let's have, we are, we will go into the garden in a second, show you a couple of things, but slightly chatty one. Um, the rain, oh my goodness, we've been having so many rain days, but it's perfect rain. It's the most perfect kind of rain. It's, we're getting these long, long showers, but the rain is actually quite gentle. So as it's landing on the soil, it's just sinking in. So all the beds are getting really soaked. They're not getting soaked to the stage of being a quagmire, but also because the rain isn't heavy and pelting, it's not compacting my soil. It is the most perfect rain. And of course that makes weeding easier, you know, it's helping things to grow and be green, fantastic. It does mean though that, that time in the garden is a bit of a, yeah, one might be here for sort of four or five hours but only get into the garden for half an hour because we're backwards and forwards to the sheds. Oh, but it makes, it makes such a change from last year. This time last year, what day are we today? I think it's the morning of Monday the 17th. Uh, yeah, this time last year we were about three months into a drought which went on for another June, July, August, September, another four months. Had seven months of drought last year. Looking back at my notes, we had a bit of gentle drizzle on the 11th of May. And that was about it. So yeah what a relief in comparison to last year it makes working with the soil easier weeding is easier of course there's more weeds coming up because of the rain but also the seeded beds they're getting a nice gentle bit of watering every day that saves me a watering trip i mean i'm coming down most days anyway to deliver the seedlings and if it was dry i'd be watering too but it can take me an hour to water this garden even before I've got half of the bed sewed. So that's great. Um, but yeah, dodging between the showers. The other reason I'm mentioning that the rain is perfect in terms of being gentle is this is the absolute ideal time to get our beds mulched. Trap that lovely moisture in, protect the soil if we do, you know, if we keep getting more rain and it's gonna be pelting rain, protect the soil a bit come on to that in a second because I have been mulching. So the big thing that happened this weekend, oh I'm so delighted, we're just starting to get back to some sort of normal in allotment life in terms of the restrictions that we were, the restrictions we had because of Covid. So two things happened this weekend. One, uh, all through last year, a couple of plots were given up just because people have moved out of London or what have you. But last year, the, the council said 
So I should say with this allotment site, the council own the land, but we run it as a sort of self-managed group, which is great. You know, we get on with things, we know what needs to be done, we get on with it. But the council, they hold the waiting list. So all of last year, they said, yes, you can stay open. You know, it's, it's good for people's health to be outside, mental health and physical health. Just make sure everyone keeps their social distance and any communal areas, just close them. So our kitchen and sort of dining area, that's been closed all year. Tool sharing, that was kind of a no-no. Um, the working parties, we didn't, ha we didn't all come together for a work party. What we were doing was each of us would volunteer to do a task and we'd do it on different days and do it separately from each other, just keeping everyone safe. But also the council didn't want to send anyone new down here to look at a plot for the whole of last year. So we've got, I think it's a total of five plots which need new owners. We are now allowed to telephone people on that waiting list again. Oh, I'm so excited for people. So on Saturday, we had our first proper work party. Talk about that in a minute, because that's the result of that work party is something I'm going to quickly do today before I go home. But we also had, while I was here in the morning, a lass came down to have a look around and <clears throat> she just yeah she snapped a plot up straight away so she is so excited she's finally at the top of the waiting list and she's got her plot yay oh my goodness and then in the afternoon I don't know the result of this someone else was coming um to view so hopefully that's a second newbie but when I saw her one of one of the committee was sort of walking her around and showing her the available plots you're right Rusty <laughs> um I was grinning from ear to ear with excitement for her because I remember that day for me so well. I remember it like it was yesterday. I got the call on the Friday afternoon. Um, Hello, I'm speaking to Miss Gregory, yes. Um, I'm just calling from mm -mm, allotments. I'm wondering if you are still wanting to have an allotment. Yes. <laughs> um, are you free to come and view tomorrow? Meaning the Saturday. And it was funny because the Saturday I was due to, with sort of like one of my best girlfriends and her little boy, we were due to be having a day out. And I thought, oh no, she's going to be really cross with me if I cancel. And then I suddenly thought, hang on a minute, this is the friend I was going to be doing the plot with. She won't be cross. So I said, yes, of course I'll be there to view. Uh, so came the next day on the Saturday, brought my fork with me, want to put it in the ground, looked at it three different plots I think there were. One is at the far end, really shady, and I just said no to it straight away, because there's also, next door to it, there's a garden with a load of big mature trees, and I just thought all those trees, they're gonna be like nicking all the nutrients and the moisture. Uh, so I said no to that one straight away, looked at another one that far end, and it just seemed a bit out of the way. And then I looked at this one where I am, and I'm slap bang in the middle of the whole site and I thought that's perfect for light there's nothing is going to interrupt the light I, was, I thought you know I'm going to be next to the main path that's great I'll see everyone coming and going it'd be a really great plot to have in terms of being social and the rest is history but yeah uh, I remember both the phone call on the Friday and that first visit on the Saturday so well so I'm I'm so, so thrilled that we're open for business again for new people. <clears throat> it's not the best time of year to get a new plot. Ideally, I suppose you'd want to get it in October, November. Then you've got all the winter to clear it, decide where your beds are going to be, you know, sort of make your layout. But you know what? I mean, I was the same. It was March when I got my phone call. I didn't care. I didn't care that it was the wrong time of year. I was just so flipping. I nearly used a really strong swear word then. I'm so flipping happy to get my plot. Yay! Oh, I am so happy for them. Right, so the other thing 
sorry, this is a bit of a wordy one, isn't it? Um, sorry, not sorry, I'm wordy. So the other thing is we're back to now having work parties where we all do it on the same day, we come together to do it. I think the message is kind of slowly sinking in, but this weekend it was really damp. There was a really, really low turnout for this particular work party. There are a lot of people who are regulars who come every single who come to every single work party and even they were missing. So I think we'll, we'll, that momentum will come back. But what it meant was I was on mowing duty all on my own. So the whole central path, our big picnic barbecue area, the orchard area. I did the whole lot. Uh, it took about an hour and a half. <laughs> it really hurt my knees. But my reward for that the grass clippings, free mulch, brilliant. Now in other areas, particularly say in the orchard, where we've got all the trees, everything, you can't necessarily get into all the spaces with the mower. So another of my friends was on the big the beast of a petrol strimmer. It terrifies me, it's so noisy. So he was getting into all those less accessible places with the strimmer. And I would say, how high was the grass? Maybe 25, 30 centimetres. Wasn't flowering or going to seed yet, but it's quite long. And that's what I'm after today. So, I think, without further ado, let's go to the far... Or I might just quickly show you in my garden what went on. But I think it's just that I just want to underline it. That I'm just really, really happy that people are getting that phone call, that phone call, which, and I'm sure all of you with allotments, I know it's different, slightly different in other countries with community gardens and what have you, but in the UK, to get that call to say an allotment has come free, would you like to look at it? It's one of the best days of our lives, isn't it? I... I, do you know what the whole weekend I was grinning about it because I was imagining so that lass what's her name they did tell me her name I won't say it on camera because I've not ever spoken to her properly but yeah I was just imagining how giddy and happy she must have been when she got the call and then to come to the site because the site's looking really good at the moment as well it's one of those things where in the last sort of four or five years people who weren't really looking after their plots very well have left we've got newbies in they're newbies from two years ago because obviously no newbies last year but they've all worked really hard they're really committed to their garden so the site is looking great what a great site for someone to walk into for the first time and think yeah i'm going to be a part of this scene man <laughs> right um let's pop into the garden and then we're going to go to the orchard. Oh, hurrah, hurrah, hurrah for all this grass clippings to mulch my onions with these other red onions. I'd never mulched onions before until a couple of years ago. I was always worried that will it trap too much moisture around the bulbs and therefore make them rot? But it didn't. It worked great at, you know, keeping enough moisture in there and at weed suppression so you can see how it's not exactly hot here it's warm but the warmth and the rain have really spurred things on so this is the white onions they're looking great and because they're up enough now i've been able to nick all the tunnels from these and put them a couple there one over there one behind there won't swing us behind at the moment the beds where I'm going to be seeding, I, I can move these tunnels now to there just to discourage the foxes and the catses from, oh yeah, scratching and pooping. Oh, and I nicked this one because this is the calendula. Oopla! Oh, don't fall over, Ruby. This is the calendula. Yeah, they're looking perfectly happy well. I do so very thickly. I'm quite greedy with my calendula. But what I can always do is I can always sort of intermittently lift a couple of clumps and sort of add them to the ends of the rows here just to give a bit of cheerfulness to the path. 
the poached egg plants are, have been loving a bit of moisture and look the wee forget-me-nots they are gorgeous aren't they yes you happy things and the other 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 really fabulousness is yes look at that this is my cara my main crop you don't necessarily see them all but they are all up now from tabulosa and the first of my salad potatoes which are charlotte this year because i couldn't get any anya so there's one and there's another the first of them are up oh and i can see one just over there they really the leaves are really dark when they first come up so they're not really obvious for example just seeing one here I and mean, look they're sort of they're almost like purple when they first come up but yeah they're all coming up so just shows what a bit of rain a bit of warmth a bit of rain can do you know no matter how much I water when I water with a watering can with essentially tap water I can never replicate the goodness that we get from the rain so I'm lovely to, I'm lovely <laughs> I'm lovely <laughs> I, it's lovely to see things growing and for me I always like that moment where I can take the nets off because I hate the sight of all these nets. Uh, I want to see my plants. So having got these off the other day, beautiful, beautiful to see all of this life again. Right, now this mulch, believe it or not, for an hour and a half of mowing it doesn't look like it does it but that's three hopper loads of grass clippings fantastic because it's the first main cut of the year i kept the blades quite high and i think probably what i'll offer to do is in a couple of weeks because all this rain will make the grass grow as well is do another mowing just drop the blades down a little bit and then hopefully get enough mulch to cover this lot but now i'm going to go on my ways down into the far corner of the site to our orchard to hopefully snap on myself another bit of a freebie. that wood pigeon chatter to us. This is always, always one of my favourite spots on the whole site. It's somewhere I quite often, particularly in summer on really hot days, I quite often come and sit. Our bench needs, needs new planks, it's getting a bit old and rusty, but it's a lovely place to come and sit in the shade of this beautiful apple tree that's looking magnificent this year. We had a fantastic crop from it two years ago, so September 2019. Massive crop. The following spring, so just before lockdown, quite a hard prune and that year, so last year, we knocked a huge crop. But looking at the amount of blossom on it this year, I think it's going to be another really good harvest. We started making a new bog hotel over there. But the reason I've come over to the orchard area is it's going to be sopping wet. Um, all of this. Strimmed rather than mowed. Uh, I'm going to have a big old. Oopla, don't tip yourself up. Yeah, I'm gonna, just going to have a massive old raking session now. 
get as much of this up as I can, get it back to my garden. Now the thing is, it's really quite long and bulky, so I don't know whether I'll be using it as a mulch. I was thinking of mulching under my broad beans, I to think then, um, but I can't get onto them, they're so, they're so packed in there. <coughs> Excuse me. So I will either try and use it as a mulch, where I've got a slightly wider spaces. It might be, it's, I think it's too bulky to get between the onions. Yeah, I think it might be too bulky to get amongst the onions. But it's gotta be good for something. The other thing I was thinking was where the potatoes are coming up, I could use it instead of earthing them. The only thing I'm a bit worried about about doing that is it's really quite wet and heavy. And I'm concerned if I put that on the new shoots, I'm not sure whether they'll rot. So the other option is I just use it for compost. Again, it's very green, it's very wet. If I just put it all in the compost bin, what will happen is it will compact, it'll just turn into slime in the middle, all the air will be squashed out, yet it'll become a slimy, hot, horrible mess. So if it is for compost, pesky aeroplane, then I'll make sure that I mix it really thoroughly with, say, some cardboard. The point is, though, <laughs> for the frugal gardener, this is free organic matter that I can add to my garden in some way or other. I'm always, always on the lookout for, well, anything free for the garden, but especially organic matter that I can either eventually turn into compost or use as a mulch, whatever it is. Even as a mulch, this stuff will end up getting turned into the soil, the worms will take it down. This is exactly what we want as gardeners, isn't it? It's uh, food for the soil. Let's keep feeding our soil so that the soil can feed us back. Right, I better stop talking and get on because this isn't a gardening day for me. As I was saying, it's, um, it's supposed to be a quick visit to drop seedlings off. It's really wet. <laughs> oh, wow. what it's going to warm me up as well and a good oh, uh, good upper body workout right you don't need to see or hear me grunting and groaning as I do this That's oh la la. I think one barrel load for this morning will do. Also, I don't want to be greedy because other folk may have a similar idea. So, yeah, that's one barrel load to me. Oh, plus, oh, if in a week's time there's still a load there, no one else has taken any. I might go back and get a bit, but yeah, it's um, it either needs shredding down a bit to use as mulch, or yeah, compost, or if it dries out a bit, then maybe for helping with the earthing up of the spuds. We'll see. Yay, free stuff! I love it. Right, tools away, Vivi. so funny I've been down here about 45 50 minutes and in the space of that time 
three more lots of friends have been with their seedlings, plantlets, whatever you want to call them, to drop them off and go back home to get on with their working day. <laughs> I love it. I kind of, it's this wonderful, oopla, wonderful rhythm of the year. Same every year. I suppose the only difference is this year there are more folk who are still working from home so they get to have these little midweek or sort of Monday to Friday jaunts. I didn't think these needed any staking but I think that one does so I need to disappear, get my string, what have you and then I need to hightail it out of here and go and get on with my day but yeah I couldn't miss the opportunity of getting some more organic matter for free. It's always, always worth that little effort. And like I said, I'd be here. What is it with the planes today? Um, I would be here anyway to come and drop the seedlings off. I think that one needs a little bit of support too. Um, so yeah, if I'm going to be here anyway, make the most of it, quickly do another job. Literally, I guess you could say from walking from the house to here, get the seedlings sorted in the cold frame, go and do that bit of raking and dumping, walk home. It's about an hour and a half. It would be slightly less if I didn't stop and chat to people along the way, but that's part of the joy, isn't it? So for now, I'm going to say cheerio to all of you. I'm going to go and get the string, get these in the cold frame, get home, get on with my day, and then hopefully, it's fingers really tightly crossed, hopefully, We've got a window of dry in the next couple of days so I can finally start seeding all my beans and chickpeas and myriad other things. So hopefully you'll be able to join me for that. But in the meantime, I do hope you're all getting some little bits of garden time, if you can. And uh, yeah, just enjoy the fact that we are well underway with spring now. Well, at least those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. Shut up, Vivi. Get a move on. See you all soon. Cheerio.